I've had quite a number of strong responses to my last video from people who tell me I should be criticizing Islam, not Christianity, because Islam is a major threat to our freedom. And yes, this is very true, but if not for the absurd level of respect and deference and privilege we accord religion in the West, Islam wouldn't be anywhere near the problem it is. And besides, I think I may have mentioned Islam one or two times in the past, so I just thought I would take a break from the divisive, Islamophobic, racist hate-mongering to give my multicultural critics a chance to untwist their knickers and get their blood pressure down while I pick on some weak and defenseless Christians purely for sport because, hey, I guess that's the kind of person I am, and it's probably one of the reasons I'm going to hell, because apparently I am going to hell for rejecting Jesus, among other things. And I find this a puzzling accusation, because if you've watched the video, you'll know that I don't reject Jesus, I reject religion. I'm happy to listen to Jesus all day long, as long as he keeps his mouth shut about religion. And specifically, I reject Christianity, along with the clerical criminals who run Christianity and the fake artificial Jesus that they have invented for public consumption. The man known as St. Paul, for reasons which I've never really understood, was the first one to push this uh, supernatural nonsense about Jesus. But the early church capitalized on it and exploited it enthusiastically because they needed Jesus to be a god so that they could use him to generate fear, which of course is the only level they know how to operate on, and also so that they could claim supernatural authority through him, which is the best kind of authority to have when you're bluffing. As a mere man, Jesus was almost useless to them. All he could offer were words of compassion and wisdom. And what earthly good would they be to the men who run the church? That would be like handing a slide rule to a monkey. So they needed to make him a god, but of course they already had a god, the same one they've got today, the fictional psychopath of the desert. So they had to find some way of conflating Jesus, author of the Sermon on the Mount, with this horrible, monstrous entity of vengeance and death. Quite a theological challenge that was always going to take some specialist bullshitting, but they finally managed it in the 4th century when they solidified the idea of the Trinity, the three gods in one, or the three god trick, as I like to think of it, the classic Christian con. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Although, if you're like me, you may prefer the atheist trinity. That's God the imposter, God the fraud, and God the holy phony. Holy as in entirely, completely, absolutely, 100% fake, false, and phony baloney. Not to put too fine a point on it. The Trinity is an outrageous piece of semantic flummery designed to confuse, not enlighten. And it follows a basic rule in religion that ideally not only should the thing you believe be absolutely impossible, but any explanation of it should be impossible to understand. And the Trinity obliges handsomely on both counts, as these three entities, the Father, God, the Son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, your guess is as good as mine, become as one, miraculously, of course, while remaining separate, so that each is uniquely God, yet each is completely God. I know, you could listen to an explanation from now until next week and be none the wiser, which is, of course, the whole idea. Now, we can argue about Jesus until we're blue in the face, about whether he existed and whether he was divine and all the rest of it, but some things are beyond dispute, and it is a matter of historical fact that the Trinity is pure invention by Christian clergy. So any Christian clergyman who tells you it's the truth is either ignorant of history or a goddamn liar. Which do you think it is? Yeah, me too. And this is what I reject. Not Jesus, but religion and the clerical criminals who run it. The people who Jesus despised as much as I do. Whited sepulchres, he called them. Outwardly wholesome, inwardly rotten. And he was being way, way too kind, in my opinion. And if I have to go to hell, for my opinion, and it seems that I do, well then, so be it. I can think of worse things. In fact, since I said in a previous video that I would rather go to hell than be a Christian, I've been contacted by several people urging me to recant those foolish words and repent before it's too late. Hell is real, they tell me. Satan is real. And they say it with such conviction, you just know they've got the information from some kind of infallible authority. Luckily, however, I'm quite looking forward to going to hell because I've heard so much about the place, it almost seems like a home away from home to me now. 
I understand it's likely to be warmer than I'm used to, which surprises me, as life is warm and death is cold. So, if anything, you'd expect hell to be on the chilly side, but apparently it isn't, according to those who know. I am very grateful that so many experts have testified to the definite existence of hell for my benefit. It's a real weight off my mind. I was beginning to worry that the idea of hell might be just a cynical ploy to intimidate weak-minded, gullible people into submitting to religious fascism. How comforting to know that it's real and that there really is everything to fear after death. Thank God for Satan. What would you Christians do without him? So before we denigrate poor old Satan too much, I know he's everybody's favourite bad guy and everything, the Lord of Misrule and all that, but the next time you're down on your knees praying like an idiot, you might want to think about offering a prayer of thanks to the big guy downstairs, because without him, in his essential role of universal bogeyman, none of this delusional nonsense of yours would even be possible. So in that sense, Satan is your saviour, not Jesus. What can I say? Them's the breaks. Peace.